So we've already started to use um, our graph transformations knowledge as part of solving trigonometric equations. And I want to take this a step further. I want to make sure that you're happy connecting these two bits of information. Okay, So from our graph transformations knowledge, firstly, we had a translation. So if y is equal to f of x was being transformed to y is equal to f of x minus a plus b, this is a translation by the vector, or by the vector, a, b. OK? So that's the first thing. Now, if y equals f of x is being transformed to y is equal to uh, k f of x, then this is a stretch parallel to the y-axis factor k. And if we've got y is equal to f of x, uh, goes to y is equal to f of 2, oh sorry, kx, let's go with kx, then this is a stretch parallel to the x-axis this time, factor 1 over k. Okay? Now, we've also got reflections, we had a look at reflections, but uh, we're going to stay away from those for the moment, okay? We want to focus on making sure we can spot a translation and a stretch, okay? So, first of all, um, if I had y is equal to sine of, uh, let's say, x plus um, 30 um, plus 2, for example, okay, then in working degrees, of course, then this would identify that this is a translation of the curve y is equal to sine x by the vector minus 32, okay? So what that would do is it would shift the sine curve 30 degrees to the left and it would move the sine curve two units upwards, okay? So what that would look like I'm going to try and draw. Um, so, usually best to think about what the sine curve usually looks like. Okay, so this is the sine curve as it usually is. Okay, so what's happened is that this has moved 30 degrees to the left. That was 90 degrees. Okay, so that point may will probably now be there. Okay, so that would be going down that way, but now uh, we've moved this point up two units, okay? So we're going to have to extend uh, my y-axis a little bit. So we're going to have to go up to here. The lowest point, okay, uh, the lowest point on the curve, which is here, has moved along a bit as well, and that has gone up two, so that would be one. That would be two, so that now goes to there. And so you can now start to see what the curve might look like. Okay, it's not obviously perfect, but the fact is that it has moved um, 30 degrees to the left and then two units up. Okay, so minus 30 and positive 2. Now, you won't be asked to sketch uh, a transformed sine curve like that, okay? But I'm just wanting you to understand that the curve itself uh, has not changed shape. It has just been moved. That's what a translation is. So if we link that back to looking at the period of the function, well, the period of the function just told you over what distance the curve repeated itself. And for sine, it repeated itself every 360 degrees. But that would be exactly the same for this curve here. Okay? So 
the transformed curve would still have a period of 360 degrees. And that is important to know. When we stretch the um, curve, then how, uh, over what distance the curve repeats can change. Especially, well, if you are stretching it in the x-axis, okay, because you're widening or shortening that period. So, first of all, let's have a look at stretching uh, parallel to the y-axis before we look at the uh, change of the period. So let's say I had to sketch y is equal to 2 sine x, okay? Then that is a stretch parallel to the y-axis by factor of 2. So if I was going to sketch it between 0 and 360, it would still have the same basic shape, but it is now, instead of going between 1 and minus 1, it's going between 2 and minus 2. Okay, but these points would be exactly the same. That'd be still 360, that'd still be 180. Okay, that would still be 90, that would still be 270. It's just been stretched parallel to the y-axis. Now, if I had y equals sine of 2x, then we can see that the 2 is affecting the x, so this is a stretch parallel to the x-axis. Now, the factor is 1 over k, so 1 over 2 in this case, and so it stretches the curve inwards. So, the curve... Instead of, now go, instead of going between 0 and 360, it's been stretched inwards, okay? So that point is now 180. So if I was to draw the whole bit for 360 degrees, then that would be 360. So in actual fact, we can fit two lots of the curve where it usually sat, okay? And that would be 90, that would be 270, that would be 45 degrees, 135, 225, 315, okay? So this is sine of 2x. It's still going from 1 and minus 1, okay, on the y-axis, but it now repeats itself not every 360, but it now repeats itself every 180, okay? So this has a period of 180 degrees, not 360. So effectively what's happened is that the period of 360 has been divided by that number there, okay? So... If we had y is equal to sine of 3x, then this would mean that that's a stretch parallel to the x-axis factor one-third. And so if, if it was one-third, I could repeat three of these sine curves between 0 and 360. And so the period is 360 divided by 3. And so that would be repeating itself every 120 degrees, okay? So we're going to continue with this into the next video where we're going to look at identifying the period of trigonometric curves. It's important when we get on to solving uh, trigonometric equations that have uh, sine of 2x or cos of 3x or whatever, okay? So it is important when we're solving it there. And we'll see that in the coming videos.